So hello, my name's Rob and this is Cat Rabbit Scale Model Studios and welcome to part two of this gaming board build. In the last part, I took this plain gray shattered Dominion board and began to transform it into a kill zone fit for any skirmish game, especially for my old boys. Part one was the basics, but in this part, we get to begin the fun stuff that will really help bring this board to life. As always, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Do check out the description below for any additional details. I'll also pop a link in there to part one for those wanting to see how I got to this stage. Now I'm super excited to start this part, so let's begin. So everything has dried rock hard and none of this ground cover is coming off. However, it's here where I like to just touch in and clean any small mistakes. Firstly, the sand has stuck to any of the bits of junk. Um, I'm just going to clean those up and to do this I'm just going to scrape them away uh, with a, a bit of a blunt hobby knife. Secondly, any knocks the boards may have taken, places where I've accidentally poked my finger into it while it was still wet, things like that. So to fix this all I'm going to do is grab some texture paint and here I'm using a little bit of Armageddon Dunes from Citadel. This won't take long to dry and you could always speed this process up with your trusty hair dryer if you have one. And now it's time to prime the board and the lovely folks over at the Colour Forge kindly agreed to send me some of their sprays to use. Now this isn't sponsored or anything like that and I'm under no obligation to say anything nice about them. However, these sprays are fantastic. Not only do they colour match some of the most popular colours from ranges like Citadel and Vallejo, they also do some of the colours that companies like Games Workshop don't produce anymore. I'm looking at you, Avalanche Sunset. The cans are 25% bigger than your average spray can, uh, coming in at a whopping 500ml and also cheaper than the likes of Citadel and Army Painter. To sum it up, same quality, nice, even, smooth finish, a broad range of colours to choose from and you're getting more for less. It's a no-brainer and I will leave a link in the description below if you want to check them out for yourself, which I highly do recommend uh, you do check them out. So I'm going to use Trench Brown on the entire board. This is basically still Legion Drab for those Citadel purists out there. Then I'm going to do some random patches of Desert Sand, which is Zandri Dust. And lastly, on the pond area, I'm just going to focus some Death Rattle Green, which is Death Guard Green. And then I'm going to leave the whole thing to dry for about 30 minutes. Now that's dry, I'm going to dry brush the entire board. For this, I find the biggest brush I have and using some cheap craft paint, I squeeze out a bit of white um, and some, I think it was burnt umber. It was just a, a very cheap craft paint again. Uh, and I basically work off as much excess on the brush as I possibly can. And I dry brush the entirety of this board. The nice thing about the ground cover we used, uh, like the Woodland Scenics buff, um, it just catches all that detail so well. And it really does just highlight every singular kind of grain that we put down. And it's, it's just a really, really good product, especially when it comes to dry brushing and things like that. It brings out the detail really, really well, as you can see. Now that's done, it's just a case of carefully painting in those little bits of scrap laying around for the board. For this, I keep the colours simple. I stick to things like contrast and just primary colours, a lot of lead belcher, that type of thing. And this just helps break up that kind of monotone that we have going on at the moment. Uh, then it was just a case of applying a wash. I'm just gonna go over it with a bit of Agrax Urshade. Just going to add a few little highlights with their belcher to add a little bit of chip in and things like that you can go as much or as little on these little sections as you want to uh, me i just like to keep it a bit simple the focus isn't really on that but it's nice to have those little visual details Now, another thing we can do to help break up the board is add random patches of flock. 
there are countless companies out there that produce pretty much every color you could imagine. But for this, I'm gonna use a little bit of the Army Painter Battlefield Grass and some, I believe it's from Jarvis, which is, I don't know where I picked this bag up from, but I've had it laying around in a tin for ages and I really wanted to use it. Um, and I'm gonna use them two together. Now to apply this, it's just a case of randomly adding patches of PVA around the board. And then sprinkling the flock on. You can add as much or as little as you want. You can even add a few different colors over each other to I kind of add some variation. Here, what I do is I cover about half the board, wait about 15 minutes or so. I stand it on its side, give it a really good bang, and then I collect all the excess, which I'm then going to use on the other side of the board. This section can be a little bit time consuming, but do just take your time, have a bit of fun with it, and um, try not to think too much about those random patches and where it's all going. So here you can see my board is covered in all my little patches of flock and as you can see it's really brightened up the board and kind of brought out a bit more of a vibe. Originally I was going for a bit more of a scorched earth kind of vibe but now I'm kind of feeling a little bit more edge of the forest if you will and I think you know I'm, I'm kind of run with that in, in this instance. However you know I'm, this has been drying for about an hour now but there is another step we can do and that is to add some tufts, which is a great way of adding a bit of variation and height. Now, same again as with the flock, there are so many styles and brands out there. Um, shop around, go for what you feel suits the style of board you want. Here, I'm gonna be using some Geek Gaming, uh, I think they're just grass tufts, and I've also got some uh, Morden tufts. They keep changing them, Games Workshop, I never know what they're called, that I always knew them as Mordeheim tufts. Uh, but apparently they're Mordant Tufts now. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna focus the Grass Tufts in the greener areas and the kind of dead looking Mordant ones just around the edges and things like that. I'm also going to put some around the edges of like the junk piles, um, just where like rainwater may have collected and things like that, just to kind of add a bit more detail to those areas. And then lastly, one thing I will do is when everything has dried, I will give the whole board a blast with matte varnish just to make sure everything's sealed in. But we do need to let the, uh, the PVA dry first. So I'm gonna leave this board overnight. I'm gonna come back to it in the morning, give it a blast with matte varnish. So I'm gonna go a little bit off script here. Um, after about an hour of you know, into drying time, I was looking at the board and thinking, do you know what, it really just lacks something. I kind of like the way this board was shaping up as more like a, I guess a foresty, I guess, type of board. So what I decided to do was lean into that a little bit more. It wasn't my original vision, but do you know what, sometimes you've got to go with the flow. And I actually went back and I added around some of my tufts, some darker flock from Wooden Scenics and just some forest floor scatter. I don't remember where I got this from, uh, but I've had it for absolutely ages. And I just kind of put a bit more depth into the board. And do you know what? I'm a lot happier with how it's looking now. And um, I think we're going full forest. So now everything is dry and I have given it a big blast of matte varnish and I've let that dry for about 30 minutes. I left this overnight and everything's locked down. There's a few little bits that kind of haven't stuck, but the majority is pretty much not going anywhere. Uh, to test this, you can stand the board up, give it a little bit of a knock, um, a tap on the back, and any little excess bits will come off. Or just give it a couple of passes with that varnish and it should seal everything in nice and firm. However, we are gonna do some extra details now and no battlefield will ever be complete without skulls. Especially in the Warhammer 40,000 universe, I'm not gonna to go too crazy with these. I'm just gonna do a few here and there around junk piles. I like doing stuff like this as to me, it's the tiniest detail that can tell a story and I'm all about that.
Then lastly, all I'm gonna do is water down some shade paints, add some random patches of water on the floor, and then gonna apply the, the shade into the puddles of water to kind of disperse it around, just to simulate things like oil. You could do caraba crimson for, you know, blood, anything like that. Some green for some God knows what toxic spills and things like that, just have a bit of fun with it. But now that brings us to a close on part two. And as you can see, it's a massive transformation from where we started. I really do love this stage as everything just comes together. And like I said, sometimes the board will kind of evolve into something else. And you know, this is where we are now. And once again, I'm really chuffed with how this is looking. So join me in part three, where I will be tackling this pond section uh, and finishing off the board. And once again, a massive thank you to my friends over at the Colour Forge uh, for sending out the sprays. Do go and check them out once again. Uh, I will leave a link below for part one once again in the description. So if you haven't seen it and you want to know how I got to this stage, do check it out. Um, but if you enjoyed this, do consider giving it a like. Let me know in the comments below or subscribing as it really helps me out and you'll always get more videos like this. But that's it from me in this one. I'll see you all next time. God bless and take care. So here you can see that my board has been covered in all my little patches of flock and how it kind of just adds that little bit of splash of color to the board. I really like how this is looking. I wanted to originally go for a bit more scorched, 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 scorched. <laughs>